Good morning. Welcome to all who have joined us for this Holy Mass. We gather today to celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter and to rejoice with the children of our parish who will receive First Holy Communion at this Mass. Let us give thanks to God for the wonderful way Jesus is present with us in the gifts of the Eucharist. As we begin our celebration, I invite you to stand and turn toward the center. Our opening song is Sing a New Song, 554, 554. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. As we gather together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and our failings. Lord Jesus, you call us to be your family. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you invite us to come to your table. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. To our Lord and Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him, and falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised, raised him up, saying, Get up, I myself am also a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, In truth, I see God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit, even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only God, Son into the world so that we might have life through him. And this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he has loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. The word of the word of the Lord. up first with my brother to go up and get uh, Holy Communion. 
which changed a lot of my perspective of church because up to that point, I didn't really know what was going on up here at the front of church. All I could see was the backs of people's heads. But when I got to sit on the end of the pew, I could peek around and see what was going on up there. And it began a, a journey of me getting closer to the altar because then that qualified me to be an altar server. So by fourth grade, I started serving mass and then I got to see more of what was going on at the altar. I understood that it was the servers who rang the bells. I just assumed it was a button that the priest pushed or something that caused the bells to ring. But no, it was the altar servers. I got to do that. And the, the my experience of receiving communion also then, of course, led to being confirmed and eventually pursuing my vocation into the priesthood. And along that path, I learned a lot about prayer and the, the depth of meaning that the Eucharist has, and it did do something to change my life. I remember when I, we were preparing for First Communion, I asked our religious ed teacher, what do you do once you've received the host? When you're walking back to your pew, what is your proper state of mind? What are you supposed to do? And she said that what she always did was, when, after she received communion, she would look around church and look at the faces of people there and know that there were people that she knew who were having some troubles, maybe a health problem, maybe looking for a job, maybe experiencing some grief, and she would, she would look at them and pray for them on her way back to the pew. And I thought, oh, that made really good sense. And so I would do my best after receiving communion to pray for those that I knew. Now, when you're young, you often find in, in church that there's a lot of, of, of just waiting around. And it seems like Mass goes on for a long time. But after I learned that you're supposed to pray in church, I found that there really wasn't enough time because I would start praying on my way back to my seat, and then when I got into my pew, I'd pray, and when the priest said, let us pray, I still wasn't done. And this has occurred during my life of when, when I have been given a list of people to pray for, that I'll, I'll sit down and start praying, and then you start thinking, well, I better add in this person, and add in that person, and maybe I can pray for all of these people. And when you start really thinking about all those people in your lives, who need prayer and their specific intentions, it's really easy to fill up your prayer time with that. And think, just like I did, well, oh, I just wish I had another few minutes to add in a little bit of What I'm trying to get at is that the, the time we spend here in church and the time we spend in prayer should not, should, should be significant. It shouldn't just be waiting for the next thing to happen. Well, how much longer till it's done? You know, sometimes the, that's the, the voice of the little, little kid saying, how much longer till, till we're done? How much longer till it's over? Well, be present in the moment and think about really what you're doing when you attend Mass, when you receive communion, and then what happens next. Because for me, going to Mass on Sunday was, was then always an enjoyable experience because it was time spent with my family. We had always had a, a long drive in out from the country to church, and we would have a chance to, to talk, although a lot of times I have my nose buried in a book, but we would have time together as a family. Dad always said that we should get to Mass early, because then, of course, you have more time to pray. Then after Mass, if we went on Saturday evening, we would usually go out for a little supper somewhere in, in town, and then off to another family's house where we would, we would talk or watch TV or hang out for a little while later, and I used to really look forward to that, going out for pizza and seeing some friends and then getting home after the sun had set. It was always just a nice, pleasant experience. Likewise, on Sunday morning, after Mass, our parish always had donuts, so we'd always run down to the church basement to get donuts, or if not that, then we'd go to the store, and Dad would always get the paper, so we could read the comics on the way home, or maybe go out for a bite to eat somewhere. A lot of times, mom and dad would just say, hey, let's just go for a drive. And we'd just go off in the country, down some road we'd never been down before, just to see what was there. So for me, those were very pleasant, happy memories. And after kind of receiving First Communion, I understood why I was there, 
understood it was a day for family and for relaxation and just having a, a nice time without too much pressure to get things right. And so I have those as some of my most treasured memories. When you are talking with a young person or, or starting a young family yourself, you need to think about the experience those young people are going to have about going to Mass. Is it just something that they have to do? Is there a lot of yelling involved on Sunday morning? Is there impatience and worry? Are you just thinking about when it's going to be over so we can get to the next thing? Well, those are not the sorts of attitudes you're going to build as a positive memory of what Mass is as that person gets older. It's no wonder we see so many young people who leave the church after they get confirmed or after they graduate from high school because they don't feel that familial, that friendly bond with their parish community. And we can do a lot to alleviate that by saying hello, by offering a warm welcome, but also truly, and most importantly, making Christ present. To truly understand that he is present here in the altar, and the reason we come is not just for the warm, fuzzy feelings or the memories of a happy childhood, but it is to encounter Christ. And the, the fundamental mystery of the Christian faith is that he loves us so much that he died for us and became food for us. Now, well, once you get that, you, you realize, well, maybe that other stuff isn't quite as important. It's, it's important, certainly. But do I, do, do I find those lead me deeper into that Christian mystery, that understanding of who Christ is? Because that's why we're here. We should be modeling Christ-like behavior to those around us so that they can find their way closer to Jesus and one day find their way to their heavenly home. And the, the communion that these children will be celebrating this morning is about receiving Christ, His body, blood, soul, and divinity for the first time. And then making that a habit of their whole life so that as they enter into the mystery, of seeing how much Christ loved them, they can then be Christ to others and act in a Christ-like manner in the world. Because when we come here and we receive this great grace from the altar, we now need to go out into the world and spread that to everyone that we meet. So he, he tells his disciples this in the gospel. He says, that you, are, you are my friend if you do what I command you. And his command is to go out and spread the good news. And it was not you who chose me, but I who chose you. God chooses you today for this important mission, and in a special way, these first communicants who will receive him for the first time. And now he tells you to go out and bear fruit yourself that will remain. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things that the Lord is useful. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, the God from God made, consecration of the Father, through him all things remain. Thank you. 
The Heavenly Father has given us grace through the Blessed Eucharist. Let us offer him our petitions and prayers. For God's people, that we may experience God's love and share it with one another. Let us pray to the Lord. may live together in harmony and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our first communicants, that they'll be filled with joy as they receive Jesus for the first time in the Holy Eucharist. Let us pray. and a good growing season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's blessing and abundance upon the people of our sister parish in Sapieca, Peru. Let us pray. Bishop of the Diocese of Davenport Court, be chosen by the Holy Spirit, would be holy and kind, a shepherd who will build up the body of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and hospitalized members of our parish family, let us pray to the Lord. Dave Shale, Kenny Schreiber, Kathy May, Paul Davis, and for all our parted loved ones who have gone to be with God, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to look with favor upon your people gathered here today and grant their prayers through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Our gifts are presented. Let us join in singing 648. You have called us 648.
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ. Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this paschal sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, thank you to all the catechists and teachers who helped prepare our, uh, our first communicants for their special day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.